Enterprise Scoop throughout this year has been visited about five or six different provinces. Uh, we've talked to a lot of people affected by the violence. That violence is very worrying and it is, it is getting worse. It's not all joined up, it's not all about the centre. Some of it is very local agendas, but nevertheless there's a feeling that the country is fraying at the edges and that violence is growing, so that's, that's very worrying. Right now what we have is uh, the international community agrees that the San Silvestre Agreement is the right way forward but there's very little traction and there's no mechanisms for the international community to engage to try to push forward that agenda and at the moment we just see a blocked situation uh, less than two months before the end uh, of 2017 which according to the agreement is meant to be when elections are held. They won't be held but nevertheless the agreement lays out the path that should be taken. What's interesting when you, when you get out on the ground and you talk to people in, in provinces like North Kivu, Shopo or the former Katanga is two things really leap out. One is people are very, very frustrated with the situation and their faith in politicians is declining very rapidly and that's something you don't always see reflected in international perceptions and it's a very big problem. The second thing is simply the concern at the spreading violence. Uh, we, we've seen violence in the Kasai go from really nowhere. Nobody saw this coming uh, in the middle of 2016 and we're now, uh, we're now looking at a situation where according to the Catholic Church a thousand have died this year. So there's evident concerns of growing instability and a frustration at the political blockage and that frustration is not just about the government, it's really about all politicians. So that's, that's what you, you notice when you, you go around the provinces and talk to people. We start our recommendations with an observation that this could last a while and that the international actors engaged need to be engaged for a long-term project of getting to elections. Now that's not just about the technical aspects, it's not just about registering voters, getting ballot boxes out there, it's also about political space, keeping political space open, allowing opposition parties to campaign properly because otherwise you could technically have elections but they don't democratically mean very much. We need to push forward towards election preparation. It's not going to be in the next couple of months, but nevertheless we need to keep making progress. We need to give people who are working in the system a sense that they have allies and a sense that progress can be made. That's one. Number two is a much better coordination between the international actors engaged in this. There is an enormous number of international actors, whether it's organisations, the UN, the African Union, whether it's countries or the neighbours of the DRC, all nine of them are concerned and then of course major international powers. They have different views, sometimes they express those views, sometimes it's all a bit hidden, uh, there's lots of differences, partly between the West and between Africa but also within those blocks there's different views on how to push these things forward and how to ensure elections are held and held peacefully. They need to have much, much better coordination mechanisms and talk to each other in more and talk to each other more frankly about their differences.